Today is Wednesday, March the 4th, and today's uh, rally, apparently, was because of the primaries last night, where a moderate candidate beat out a radical candidate who the Wall Street was afraid of. Although the coronavirus has been blamed for um, everything so far, it only took last night's primaries to change some minds. But it's temporary. Look at all the green in here. Amazing. There were a few red things in there. Um, we won't dwell on those. The advancers, four to one. Volume was lower than we've seen before. So Monday, when we had that big rally back, or was it Tuesday? We saw much more volume than this. And this was less volume, so it's less convincing. But it was just steady as you go all day long, and it just kept rising. There was nothing that pulled it back. Um, let's just take a quick look at the volume. I'm mindful that my videos have been going on too long lately, so I'm going to try to keep this to eight minutes. Advancing volume and declining volume was like eight to one or nine to one. But look at our market breadth. Popped back up over the oversold line. So are we heading back to um, green days? No, not necessarily. Look at uh, 2007. We've seen these kind of uh, things before. We shot back up Here's the uh, 100 line right there. So just a little bit under this one, um, which is the primary Dow line at 15,000 here. But look how we came up over the 100 line only to immediately shoot down, stutter, and then drop down to almost as low as the previous one. Anyways, what I'm saying is that the coronavirus problem didn't go away today. And just because the government passed a bill that pours a lot of uh, throws a lot of money at the problem that's not going to stop the transmission not dead in its tracks so let's look at some charts and see if we can see any clues the s p 500 up over the 200 again today so we've been uh, below the 200 above the 200 below the 200 above the 200 let's look at the weekly zoom out and last week, the cloud we said was our um, savior here. Uh, we're at the top end of the weekly range. So we're halfway through the week and we're at the top end. We're looking at the Chiku span now, which could stop at the top of the cloud or the candle could stop at the top of the cloud. But there's other things uh, to consider. And the biggest thing to consider is just the whole market approach to um, wanting a damn good pullback. And this volatility is really good for the algorithm traders, the day traders, the computer traders. They're making a killing on this volatility. The volatility didn't change that much. This is a one day. Let's look at the weekly. And our volatility is still stuck in the middle of where it has been all week. So the fear index has not gone away. Apple had another spectacular day, reminiscent of the last time we had this huge pullback. Let's look at the one day because the Chiku span got blocked by this candle here. And the price is in the cloud after being saved at the bottom of the cloud yesterday. So we're, we're in the cloud. It's going to be a rocky period. There's an opportunity for us to move up tomorrow before we meet resistance at 310 or 312. But there's really no good news. There's no reason to think that Apple will go up. Did all the problems go away in China? Are they making new iPhones again at the same rate as they were before the coronavirus? There's no indication of that yet. Will they? Yes, of course they will. But there's plenty of reason to think that the market is not ready to give up on the volatility and uh, just have us going back to the glory days again. Amazon up $52. Caterpillar up. Uh, 1.44 percent but on low volume I didn't see anything um, certainly not the coronavirus spending from Congress is going to help Caterpillar Google 
What do we see about Google? Low volume. Low volume. Shopify up $31. Wow, really taking off. Um, there's about 15 days left in my uh, options. Uh, at this point, I don't think I'm going to make any money, but I want to reduce the loss that I have. My Shopify loss on my three contracts right now is $420. Um, earlier this week, it was $1,000 loss, so I'm really happy about that. Look at where we got support yesterday at the top of the candle, and we took that bounce up. Now we've got, we're above the candle, so we've got that area for support. Again, low volume. Um, SPLK, look at the moves that it had today after earnings. It dropped down, not didn't quite fill uh, this gap, but I don't accept gap fills in the regular trading hours. So this is extended trading time. And we were down at one point by about $13. And now we're... Um, up a couple of dollars at the end of the day. So let's see what happens tomorrow. But look at the volume. The volume was pretty, pretty big. For the last two days, we've had big volume. So SPLK might rally tomorrow on this news. AT&T was up over 38, stopped by the cloud. But look at what's up ahead. What's up ahead is a very thin cloud and an opportunity for AT&T to shine and to pop through there. The Chiku Span blocked by this candle right here. The um, stochastic momentum indicators, the, the fast moving one is moving up. The slow moving one is starting to plateau, but it hasn't finished its cycle down. It still has a little bit more to go. And in the volatility, there'll be an opportunity to buy back AT&T again under $37. That's my feeling, so I'm holding on. I only have half a position. Whirlpool up $4 on really weak volume, so that's not much of a big deal. Nothing to really scream about. It is stuck in the weekly cloud, and on a weekly basis, um, the Chiku Span is stopped by this candle 26 weeks back. Um, so that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about today. Keep it under eight minutes. Where are we going tomorrow? Um, volatility. Uh, there's no reason to run out and buy anything right now. If you bought something at the beginning of the week and regretted it yesterday, you're a little bit happier today. Uh, maybe in the next couple of days, it'll be an opportunity to make money on those purchases and then get out because next week there'll be an opportunity again.